Welcome to the Love on the Go podcast, brought to you by Carolina's Matchmaker. I'm Lori Burzak, and for over 17 years, I've been helping singles find the relationship of their dreams all over the Carolinas. Along the journey, I've met so many amazing professionals and experts from various fields, and I'm excited to introduce them to you. What's my goal? I want to help you look at love and relationships in a new way and to grow in your understanding of how love works. Let's learn together how people have overcome personal obstacles and have found love, first and foremost, with themselves. The ultimate goal is realizing that you are worthy and deserving of love. Let's get started. Well, today's guest comes from you from across the pond. (laughs) Alex Miller Brooks is a colleague of mine. We are both in the Matchmakers Alliance and he lives uh, in Manchester, England. Welcome, Alex. Hello. Hello, Laurie. You well? Yeah, it's so good to see you. You and I met, what, like three or four years ago when you applied to be part of the Alliance. Crazy. We had like such a nice chat the first time we met. And then I've just seen your business explode since that conversation. Like yeah. you are, if you all check his Instagram, which I'll put in the show notes, he's always being quoted in magazines. You're all, you're in on tons of TV. Um, it's really remarkable, but you still haven't come to a matchmakers Alliance conference. So. <laughs> I, knew, I knew you were going to bring this up. So. <laughs> still it, right. All right. So November Cancun, talk to your wife, talk to your people. Let's make this happen. All right. There's no excuse. (laughs) We have people from England that come. So we have people from all over the world come to these conferences. Okay. They all come. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll talk about that later. So, um, so you're a co-founder and managing director of select personal introductions. Now, do you take on men and women for matchmaking? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we, I mean, we, we've been going 27 years. So we, we kind of starting with the kind of dating agency yep. kind of process. So there's a lot of clients, a lot of paying clients. And okay. then obviously we've gone into more of the matchmaking as well. So we kind of run that run those alongside each other. So, uh, yeah. So I think it's interesting for, for people to understand a dating service versus a matchmaking agency or company. So dating services mainly introduce clients to clients. Yes. Matchmaking companies will kind of go out of the box and recruit, which is what I do for for my male clients. Yeah. Um, so, and it sounds like you do two concurrently, so that's good. Yeah. You've got a big I big operation. The dating, the dating service is harder. Is yeah, yeah it's harder yeah. because the people are are discouraged because they're only meeting the other people that paid, and they don't always meet all the criterion. Right. So then you, I bet you, sometimes you probably want to give the service to the dating service people, what the matchmaking clients are getting, because you know, you could do a better job, but then you're kind of stuck in like this little box of, well, they paid me this, the other people are paying me that. Right. And that's, and I suppose that's the difficulty, isn't it? It's like, what are you willing to invest in your love life? You know, it's not just about money. It's about time as well. It's about commitment. You know, some people, some people invest the, the the money, the financial side, yeah. and then fail to invest their own time, their own emotions, their own, yeah. and and drive that forward. And yeah. and sometimes that's that's the downside. So, um, yeah. it's about looking at what you've got, what you can afford, mm. and then getting the most out of that. There are some clients that we have that are so um so energized by it they are so on the ball they'll spot things we put what we call sunday spotlights out and they'll see somebody go oh he sounds great or she sounds great can you introduce us mm. so they kind of almost giving us the energy to drive mm. their membership for as well which is really really good other people just sit back and get on with that yeah. i suppose <laughs> yeah well it's interesting because while it's always like an idea of mine you know you could i could take on more clients and do more like a larger operation. I just like to keep it small and boutique and just do the high level service for everyone. And, you know, years ago, I mean, I used to take on women for matchmaking and it was challenging because a lot of men don't hire matchmakers. And I want to talk to you about that as a male matchmaker, what that's like. Um, And then the women would get discouraged and um, it was hard for me to recruit. And then I would get them online dating. And then all of a sudden they had so many options, the women, and they were like, and then they would find somebody. I was just looking at Facebook, one of my clients that I did exactly that. She hired me for matchmaking. I segued her to online dating and she found her husband and she has a baby. 
and she's as happy as can be. And it just kind of just, it, it shifts the dynamic when a woman is online dating because she, she has options and it's just harder to take on a woman for matchmaking. It's just been my experience. So I only want to do for my clients what is successful for them. Yeah. I, but I think that's something to do with you as well, Laurie, in the sense of um, I think you will bring something through to her that she will use and she will take into her experience of dating online. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of people that, that that's sometimes where they fail in the sense that they, they have this concept of this is what I want. This is what I yeah. want. This is what I've got to have. This is this is the stereotypical kind of end result of the perfect husband. Yeah. And and I know that you will talk about it. You've mm. probably got them reading some books. You mm. will get them to open up some of their their kind of preferences. Their kind of yeah. uh, some of those some of those those moments where they get stuck in their own thought process. And suddenly they'll have that moment where they'll see somebody and they go, oh, what? yeah. Maybe I should, Laurie said I should try this. Let's go right. try it. Because unless they do that, and you see, I've I've spoken to people where they've come, they've seen us, and you can tell their mindset isn't quite there. It's yeah. not ready mm. to find that partner. 100%. Mm. And also I think it's like a matter of recognizing when somebody appreciates you, you give them more of a chance. Like if, you know, one of my clients gets online dating and a guy is acting really appropriately, texting appropriately, asking them out consistently, even if at first the spark isn't there, but they keep going out with him and they they see like he's a genuinely authentic guy, they give him a chance and it could definitely evolve into something romantic and long lasting. So it's like how somebody's treated. Yeah, and and also you sometimes find that I, I know where some ladies have rejected some guys, maybe on some of the communication they've they've received. And yeah. I think what you also remember is sometimes when a guy gets nervous, mm. they can respond in a particular way. And it's it's not a derogatory way, but it's just it it's what we call in the UK banter. Yeah. And they use it because they're nervous. They don't quite know how to approach it. If, if you think about it, our network, a guy's network is is just so constricted compared to a female's. And mm-hmm. that's where we struggle, you know? That's where, you know, when a guy goes and meets people, meets ladies, he yeah. doesn't have those social skills. He doesn't have the conversational skills that, that women do. Um, so that if you do get that message, you think, hmm, keep going, see yeah. what comes up. Because it can be those initial nerves that the guys yeah. have. They don't know how to communicate with you. Because each woman's different, and it's what it depends on their experience of of what they've come across when they've met the females as well. Because there are some ladies who just do not like you know what we call chivalry in this country. Mm. You know, I I am a I will hold the door open, you know, for anybody. Oh yeah. Uh, And there are some ladies that don't like it and they see I'm well down south, we love it. I mean, I've not once heard a woman say to me, I can't stand when a guy holds a door. But I remember going through a phase in college and right after college where I was like, no, I don't want anyone holding doors for me. Now I'm like, please open the door for me. <laughs> I will step through. <laughs> I have no problem at all. Um, but I wanted to really show my independence back then. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So you you were involved with the, the Real Housewives of Cheshire. Yes. What was that about? That was that was an interesting one. Um one of the ladies, she just, her flirting skills were atrocious. Even, <laughs> even the friends on the show were going just absolutely diabolical. And again, that comes down to, you know, we, we did a quick, quick exercise. She walked into a bar, we were wandering around. And I said, you do really? I said, who? okay, I said, keep looking at the bar. I said, tell me who you're interested in, in this bar. And she said, what yeah. do you mean? I said, well, there's a number of guys in here. Who, who have you spotted that you're interested in? Uh-huh. And I, I don't know. I said, do you know why you don't know? She went, no. I said, because you didn't look at anybody. You kept wow. your head your eyes down and you went straight yeah. to the bottom. And I know being a TV personality, you, you've kind of got that conundrum of, oh, will I get spotted? Will then yeah. somebody start coming into my free time and everything? But also if you don't acknowledge the look, the observation, you know, the interest, you never you're never going to pick up on those signals. And again, this is why I would say, you know, if somebody isn't going to do matchmaking, go do some coaching because these are things that we, the coaches and the matchmakers will always talk about. It, it's like a, 
to me, analogy I always use, uh, you know, you might have the best sports personality playing a sport, tennis or something like that. They will always have a coach watching them. 100%. Saying, your backhand's a little bit off, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're queuing action or something. So it's the same with, it's the same with, you know, dating. If you don't pick up on the signals, if you don't improve your skill set, you'll miss things. Yes. Um, do you find that women are more receptive to you? Do you have women on your staff that, that work with women or do you work with women directly? And are they as receptive as the female counterparts that you have? What's really interesting is we kind of gauge this on what the client feels comfortable with. So it's more about personality. So there are people I've interviewed that might connect with one of the girls in the office better. And there are people that I've not interviewed, somebody mm -hmm. else has interviewed, and we'll just build up a rapport. So sometimes it's more about personality than, than kind of, I'm a man, I'll, in, I'll kind of, I'll interview the guys and, and vice versa. So it's, no, it's quite interesting. It's, um, there aren't, I mean, when I started, there weren't many male matchmakers. Oh there yeah, were, still to this day. Yeah, there, might, there were guys who owned companies, but they didn't get involved in the matchmaking. And I think what it is, it's a very emotional kind of side um, yes. and probably a more empathic, empathetic uh, kind of guy rather than a, more of a kind of macho kind of <laughs> yeah. macho, beating chest uh, guy. Um, so that that kind of, I think that helps. But it's it's interesting. It's um, obviously having the name Alex. Yeah. If I haven't spoken to me or they don't know who I am, they do expect a woman. Interesting. What about the men? I wonder if the men are saying things to you that are different from how they speak to women. On yeah. Your staff. Very, very much so. Very I'll much. Give us so. some examples. So they'll. It, it's. I. I. I would say it's more when they are talking about the kind of person they'd like to meet, more about the physicalities. Oh, of course. Um, and they'll go just between you and me. It's this, or I don't find this attractive. Right. And um, so, yeah, so it's, I would, I would say they, they, they kind of open up a lot more. So I, I get to hear some kind of conversations and history of, of things. Yeah. That haven't worked. You know, I I, I've worked, I've worked with guys who have, have, have um, f suffered from abuse, you know, they've been in a relationship and he was, he was, he just opened up about it and um, it was quite interesting. So we did some coaching, got him through that and he is, he's in a relationship he's off he's doing it he sorted it out he sorted his head out and actually emotionally he's so intelligent now in the mm -hmm. sense of you know he 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 realized what wasn't right and what was right and that he wasn't in the wrong mm -hmm. um, that he wasn't weak mm -hmm. um it's it's it was fascinating you know I've, I've i've spoken to ladies who've been through that but when you when you speak to a guy there is a I think because again it goes back to the network, they don't have many people to talk about it to. And mm -hmm. um, you know, guys will laugh it off or they'll have a joke, but yeah. they don't have that that network of people. So they do struggle. Yes, it's such a good point. It's like, and men also aren't touched as much as women are. See, females like we go around hugging on each other, putting our hands on each other, just like very natural physical touch. But men aren't that way. I mean, a woman isn't necessarily going to touch a dude. You know, it just doesn't happen as naturally. It's a, it's, it's a, you know, something that they really think about before it happens. And since most of men's love language is physical touch, and they're not getting it really on on average, um, you know, I think that that's also such an important part of you know any kind of match that we make to make sure that a woman is affectionate. Um, but also words of affirmation. You're not, me most men aren't going to get it. Like women give it to each other all the time. Like you look beautiful today. I love your dress, that kind of thing. So for a man to get a nice compliment is a beautiful thing. So it's just something to just really keep in mind. Um, you know what I want to talk to you about? Um, I saw this on, on your Instagram that you were interviewed about online romance scams. And I was recently, um, out with a friend and we met a woman whose sister had been involved with a, with a romance scam. It was absolutely heartbreaking to hear this story from this wonderful woman talking about her sister and how her sisters now had to get a second and a third job. And she was completely set up um, financially before this occurred. 
And the woman proceeded to tell us that this guy said he was in the military and, you know, he was so in love with her. And I don't know that they ever FaceTimed, um, but obviously he never came to visit and she just pumped money at him constantly. Have you heard this before? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard it happen to guys as well. One of our clients, he literally, oh, yeah. he was on one of the main, main apps and mm -hmm. he said it happened to him twice in one week. That a woman um, asked for money. Yeah. Yeah. Now, was it a woman? Right. Exactly. Exactly. You have to it's remember now, this is, this is money, you know, we're looking at America, you're looking about six, seven hundred million, six, seven hundred million dollars a year in romance scam. But, oh, um, and a lot of it to do is, is more financial now in the sense of Bitcoin. So, so that figure has gone down. Yeah. But what what they've spoken about is, has somebody categorized it slightly differently? But um, I think the hard thing is it can happen a number of different ways. Um, it can happen very quickly. Mm. Um, so somebody is almost love bombing you, almost you know telling you exactly. I think that's the point. They're telling you exactly what you want to hear. Yeah. So you kind of interested, you get drawn in, you just you go along with it. It's like a, a tsunami of emotion, I suppose. And sometimes these these this money can, can I and mean, people say, how did you lose so much money? But yeah. it can happen in small increments. Right. And then build up and build up. And they just everyday kind of occurrences that you think, oh yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. And that's yeah. it. And it's only it's only if you sit down and you tot it all up and you think, hold on, this mm. is a lot of money. But mm. also it can happen very slowly. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody might not ask you for money for months. Right. And they build up this relationship. And you, yeah. whether you meet them or not. And then yeah. suddenly kind of build up that, that trust, that bond. Mm -hmm. And then they start to take in that money, but also there's probably a little bit more controlling involved as well. Mm -hmm. you know, where they, try, they, they draw you away from your friends, your family. So you stop communicating as much. Yeah, exactly. then once they've got that control, that coercive control, they can start to then draw that side of let's start getting you investing money, uh, Bitcoin, um, sometimes it's about it's deliveries. Oh, could you take a delivery for me? Could mm. you sign up to that membership? Could you just do this for me? Where you pay for something for them. Interesting. It's so easily done. I mean, in the UK, um, it's the fourth fastest growing category, an online really? scam. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would think somebody would say, uh, uh why is this person asking for money? This is a big red flag. But but what you said makes a lot of sense. They, it's a very it's a psychological game where a lonely person gets attached emotionally to someone, mm -hmm. and then they get the dopamine hits. And then the person, if he if the scammer doesn't get what they want, they'll pull away. And then the person's like, "Where's my dopamine hit? I need it. I need it. Okay, well he just asked for a little bit of money. Let me just give it to him, so I can get back to my fantasy man." And he'll love me again and he'll give me all the compliments and all the things that I'm so used to. Yeah. And it's just a psychological game. Yeah. And it, again, it's it, just drawing what you just said there, Laurie, it's single people. There is mm. nobody else sat in that house. Right. Observing. Exactly. Looking in, in, in on it going, right. do you realize what's happening here? Right. There's nobody looking for you. There's, there's nobody kind of, you know, governing that for you to go, hold on. Can right. you see what's happening? But also these, these scammers can use very, like I said, they can use very interesting ways to get money. I'd love to come and see you. Um, mm. But I haven't got any money for a ticket. Right. Would you get the ticket for me? Yeah. Or, oh, my computer's gone down. We can't FaceTime. Mm. Can, you, can you buy this product and get it sent to me? Yes. Yeah. So it's just, it's very, very clever things. But again, the, the, we're talking about, as we say, millions of pounds, millions of yep. dollars. You have, um, you have now, it's a big business yeah. in the black market. You know, they have, I mean, they're talking now that, I mean, there was a documentary I was watching where they're actually advertising jobs abroad. People are going abroad for these jobs. They're right. taking passports off them mm. and then saying, go and sit in this office and earn this much money. And they are sitting in front of a computer and they are building up this rapport with different people. Oh, wow. And that's how they do. And of course, these people can't go anywhere because right. they, they've had the, the, the passports taken off them. 
Yeah. So it's, it's almost like tra- it's it's a form of trafficking to yeah, scam. Absolutely. Makes sense. There's a lot of shame that occurs for someone who ends up giving money and they know that they're eventually they know they're being scammed and they know they're in a cycle of abuse and they can't stop. It's kind of like gambling. It's an addiction a little bit. So what would you say to someone who is going through this right now? There could be somebody listening to this podcast. That's like, Oh, I'm totally doing this. Um, And you know, everybody gets something out of what they're doing. How, how can they release this? How can they step away and feel like a whole person again, what do you think? I mean, the first thing is just cut them off. You know, mm-hmm. you've got to just just cut them off straight away. It, it's it's almost like if you're investing in something and it's losing money, it's hemorrhaging yep. money. You'd have to go look. I'm gonna. I am going right now. I am going to lose this much money. Yep. If I keep doing it, mm-hmm. how much more money am I going to lose? Mm-hmm. So one, you've got to cut them off. Secondly, I would probably go and speak to somebody. Um, mm-hmm. Because again, emotionally, that is that is going to cause a trauma. Mm-hmm. Because again, if you've invested emotionally into this person, it's that, you know, we talk about, you know, when you, you come out of a relationship, you've got to go through that loss, that yeah. grieving process. And it's the same thing. You've got to go through that grieving process because you were more involved emotionally with that person than they ever yep. were. Mm-hmm. So you, you've got to almost get that and step back from it. Um, I mean, if you... Going back to what uh, I was talking about on the thingy, if you're going to, if you're if you're dating people on the apps, we always mm-hmm. say stay on the apps as long as possible. Yes. Because the other thing that they try to do is draw you off the apps very quickly. Yeah, they so, say let's go to WhatsApp instead of phone. Also. Yeah, and 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 at the moment, I mean, some of the apps are getting better in the sense of they they provide the chats. You can you can even you can even FaceTime as yep. it on the on the apps themselves. So at least you get that can stay on there keep that communication going mm-hmm. and definitely get a visual like this make sure their photo matches their face mm-hmm. talk to them find out does it does it, everything that you know about this person ring true yeah you know before you leave the app because if it doesn't ring true just block it and report them you know yes. because the apps want to get rid of these people yeah um, i always say it's not it's not the app it's who's using it right you know? And it's like, I almost want to say if they're too handsome, like if they don't match your, your look, you know, think about it a little bit, you know, people like to look, date people that look like them for the most part, right? Equal looks. Um, and then also, you know, run your background checks. And I always well, tell you know, my audience, yeah, verified that. truth finder, right? We, do not have that. we don't have it in the UK. We can't do that. Well, that's what you had mess. Somebody had messaged me that I think it was you like, how how do you do that? And you don't have it in the UK. That's a problem. Yeah. Because I know some of the software we use, you can do that. You can just hit a button. You've got it straight away. We can't. We, we, we're just not allowed to because of data protection. There are European laws that we have in place that, um, that, Mm. that govern that. So, you know, there are certain checks we can do. We can certainly vet. There is Mm -hmm. some manual things that we can do. And uh, mm-hmm. we can do digital footprints. We we can't do those kind of checks legally. Well, one way to kind of tell, like oftentimes they'll say they live overseas, but if they say that they live in your country and they and the the language starts veering off and all of a sudden, like the first few messages are spot on, exactly correct grammatically, because that's what they've been using, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste. But then it sort of goes off, off road, if you will, and they need to start responding Um, more spontaneously all of a sudden it's broken English or whatever language you're listening to Um, the punctuation's off all of a sudden you can kind of tell oh is this the same person so um, that's a clue right there yeah and again it goes back to that if it's organized crime Mm -hmm. there could be two or three people using that account and that's why it's going to change that's why the language is going to change if you notice that that writing I think, like you said, if you can get sat in front of that person quickly yeah. without buying train tickets, plane tickets, anything yes. like that, yep. if they can get there, that's a flag. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And also, like, when they start calling you pet names right away, like deer or this or, you know, that kind of thing where they're ingratiating themselves to you too quickly, nothing should go too quickly. It should just sound like a normal conversation, like as if you were sitting, you know, at a restaurant bar with someone and they, they're talking to you like a normal person. If all of a sudden they lean in and 
stop calling you dear, my dear Lori, my dear Alex. It's like, what is your deal? You, we don't know. Each other. <laughs> you know, so just like really notice like social norms and the way people are treating you. People think that just because they're online, it's going to be like a different thing. It's going to be like a hyped up romance. It shouldn't be that romantic right away. This is a getting to know you to decide if you're going to meet, to decide if you're going to go on a date. That first meeting isn't even a date, in my opinion. It's just to decide if you want to go on a first date with them. Absolutely. And that's it. And, you know, oftentimes it does turn into a date, that first meeting right away. But sometimes it doesn't. So just be like hyper aware of and pay attention to your intuition, because I will guarantee you that all of these people, unless they're mentally ill or sick or kind of walking into dementia, which I have heard, sadly, those stories too, horrible, um, your gut is going to tell you something's up here. You want and desire love and romance so badly. Um, and that's why people walk in. But if you really listen to your gut, it's going to tell you this isn't real. This isn't this isn't what I think it is. And just walk away and wait until the, you do meet that person. Yeah. And yeah. again, if you want that romance, mm -hmm. make sure you're investing that romance in the right person. You know, exactly. because somebody stood in front of you or sat in front of you it doesn't mean that the right person. And I completely agree with you. That first date, I always say to people, I know you have a list. Mm. You take that list, that mental list, and you put it on the sideboard before you leave the house for that date. And you mm. just go and enjoy yourself. Yeah. And just go. And I always say do that for the first two meetings. Mm. And if you're thinking, yeah, this guy, this woman's okay. Yeah, I'd like to meet yeah. the third time. Pick up the list, take it with you, but don't go through it like a list. Just yeah. introduce it slowly. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Do you think that there's issues that people are, are experiencing differently with dating where you are versus where I am? You mean UK versus, versus US? US? I think there are certain things that, I mean, I always say that dating is really diverse now anyway. I think yeah. I think mindset of people has changed. I've seen a big shift, especially in the last few, four or five years, in, mm -hmm. in the sense of, and I think this is where people struggle online as well, in the sense of you do have people who want relationships, but also you have those people who just want to date. They are never going to have a relationship. Yeah, There are serial daters. There are people who just want to hook up. Now, whether that's because of past relationships, so they just kind of, trying to shake the shackles or whatever you want to call it and um, there are people who are they're just going to be digital pen pals that's as far as you're ever going to get yeah and then there are some people who like the adulation it's almost like having that social profile they want somebody to swipe on them they want somebody to like them but it's never going to go anywhere so there's so and there's there's so many more i mean again you you have to look at it the apps, they are a business. It's, you've got to use it as a tool. You need to make sure that you use the app and not the app use you. Yeah. Because the app want it. It's like Facebook, Instagram. You know, we look at the Netflix documentary, Social Dilemma, and how, yeah. you know, the the some of the directors of some of those um, social platforms are saying, actually, they're trying to keep you on there. Yeah. You start going off, they'll start pinging notifications and they just turn that, crank that little, <laughs> that little button up and they yeah. send out notifications to draw you back and it's and it's the same with the app so you make sure that you're using the tool that, that app they're not using you yes and then, you know i think the, the other thing is work has changed a lot for people mm -hmm. so there are so many people now who work from home yeah and i i think that's the biggest change and i think that's the same probably in america as it is in the uk yeah. um because you're not getting out of the house for some people. Some people will go for walks and things, but what I'm saying is interacting with people. They're not getting in the car, going to work, but not what they'll do. Pick up a, they'll pick up a coffee. They'll talk to somebody. They'll cross the road. They'll bump into somebody else. They'll talk to somebody in the lobby. They'll go up to the office. They'll come back down. They've not, haven't got that. So our social skills now are dropping. So when you go on that date, your social skills are oh, absolutely diabolical. You know, I've got barristers who will go into the office every now and then, they'll go into the chambers every now and then, but a lot of the work is done from home, you know? Um, and that's, I think that's where they're they're struggling. I think that's where they're finding hardest. I, I also think we're probably, the UK is probably about five years now. It used to be about 10, but I think it's about five years now 
I think we're speeding up a little bit, especially with as matchmakers with collaboration and things like that. So our industry is kind of getting there, yeah. <laughs> Catch, catching you guys up. So yeah. yeah, interesting. Well, do you do you recommend that people meet try to meet organically as well? How I guess with the whole pub culture there, is it easier to meet people more organically than, than in the US, do you think? No, it's still hard. I think it's just when we uh, we deal with a lot of professional people. Yeah. And professional people don't have time, they don't have the inclination to go to a bar. Yeah. You know, yeah. They're, either, they're either working or they're yeah. running around doing other things. Yeah. The people at the bar are probably not the kind of people <laughs> they want to meet. Right. They want to meet. Yeah. But uh, that's why they're coming to us. So yeah. It yeah. is hard. It is hard because they're not getting that that time to work, stand, sit in front of those people, mm-hmm. um, and and that's and that's the downside really for them. Um, but it, that's again about us getting sat in front of people, but also help. I mean, we like you would give the feedback, and we try and give honest feedback as well in the sense of how is somebody coming across? Yes. Are there patterns in in how they are? presenting themselves i mean this is again why going back to what we were talking about i I always say to people when you meet those first two times don't bother taking list how do you connect what you have to remember is the way you present yourself in that first kind of meeting or date or whatever you want to call it you are going to present yourself yourself in a way that you want to be seen it doesn't mean the way you are what we also have to remember is the other person's doing exactly the same thing yeah. Then what happens is we react to how that other person presents themselves and they do the same thing. So we have all these kind of false readings going on. Once you get to the second date, once you get to the third date, we kind of just calm down a little bit. We relax. We come out of ourselves. We t- talk about more things that are to do with our lives, our backgrounds. We open up. And that's where you kind of get that feeling of the truer person. Yeah, beautiful. Alex, it has been such a delight talking to you today and seeing you. And I wish you the best. And uh, I'm hoping that we'll see each other at a conference upcoming. But if not, I know we see each other on our monthly (laughs) Zoom calls, all the matchmakers get together. So it's just wonderful to be in the industry with you. Where can people find you on socials? We are on Instagram, and Facebook and LinkedIn. If you just put at select personal introductions, okay. we'll come up. Um, matchmaker Alex, Alex Miller Brook, I'll come up somewhere on your Google search or yeah. whatever you use. So. Wonderful. Well, I'll put everything in the show notes and it was delightful to see and talk to you. Take good care. As always, it's wonderful seeing you too, Laurie. Thanks for listening to Love on the Go. I hope you join us on our next episode. You can make sure to know when it is by following us wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed it, it'd be great if you left us a review. I'd appreciate it. In the meantime, to learn more about me and how my team can help you, visit carolinasmatchmaker.com. Until next time.